looks pretty bad. I mean, like, there's nothing. That's like the basement right there. So, right behind that cement pad, it held all that moisture. It wasn't properly flashed in. And it just destroyed this uh, uh, structural part of the house. Luckily, the joists is run this way. I forget the real name for this board, but uh, it's the board that caps the end. So we're going to have to clean all that out of there. Take off uh, the first two rows of siding and uh, get us a new board installed. To show the extent of the damage, that's right behind the front door. And I'm in the basement. Now I didn't remove anything other than that pad. And you can take a gander out and see the uh, skid loader from here. So that's how bad it is. Material still good over here so we scribed a line and we're gonna use our oscillating tool that I showed in a previous video this thing is awesome works great okay I believe that's all the way through and solid so now we need to remove this whole board all the way down to the other side where we decide it's good. I think uh, if we can miss the corner and not have to go all the way to the corner, it would be a little bit easier to repair. So we're on the other side now. We obviously got rot up to here for sure. Um, looks kind of solid here. We're gonna see if we can cut it right here and be safe. Okay, seemed pretty solid there. We'll be able to tell once we rip it off. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this whole section here. It's underneath the threshold of the door a little bit, but uh, I think we'll be able to slide it out and slide the new one back in. Here's the support beam. It's a piece of six by six that we had out in the uh, yard, left over from another project. We have our old steel jack tubes from the basement project. There's one, there's another one. And then because my six by six wasn't long enough, I had one other separate jack that just so happened to be too long for the six by six. It worked great just for supporting a single uh, floor joist. As you can see, the section that we're cutting out is all supported with these jacks. I just need to remove those screws from that conduit I'm trying to rip off the side of the house here. 
Okay, we removed all the broken section or the rotted section of the face board here and now we're trying to remove the sill plate. It's definitely rotten in the middle. I went a little bit further on the sides here till I know it was a good spot. Sawed it with the oscillating tool. It's a straight line in there. Straight line in here, right next to that uh, bolt. And there's one in the middle. We just notched around that. And now we're trying to remove this old sill plate. Goodbye, old sill plate. Well, this definitely was not meant for that, and I've totally ruined this blade, but I've used it for quite a while. And I just wanted to zip that off because it's getting dark, and the sawzall wasn't going to work unless I look for a longer blade. I think it worked great. It was well worth the price of the blade. So that was the half inch, looks like, stud for the sill plate. So we're going to sweep this out real quick, get some measurements, rip our new board, and slide her on in. Okay, we got this piece cut. We had to make a little chamfer area here for under the threshold. We test fit it. Looks like it's gonna go, but it's gonna be a little tight because we got a little bit of non-perfectly square surfaces here. So it's either gonna go one of two ways. It's gonna go in really easy. We're gonna be done for the night. Or I'm going to try to put it in, it's not going to fit, and I'm going to have to rip it out and get construction adhesive everywhere. So, we're going to go ahead and put our construction adhesive goo on and hope it goes in. I don't know what's going to happen. Let's see. You want to leave a hole outside here? I can leave the hole.
it needs a little bit more work but at least the house isn't completely open to the elements and animals and such. I'm gonna seal it all up. Need to put a nailer for the siding on the bottom there. Uh, silicone it in and I bought uh, new tar paper so we can use that as flashing. We're down in a hole. Let me show you what we're looking at. Yesterday, we dug out all the heavy clay and rock that was above the footer tile. We wanted to make sure that it was uh, all intact, uh, solid piece, no broken sections, and remove all that heavy uh, soil and clay off of the top of it so it could drain better. And then after that, we pressure wash the whole face of the wall. It has tar on it from the original. Uh, I'm guessing the original build where it was resealed at one point in time. And a lot of this is still stuck on there pretty good. We have some spots down here. We have some bad mortar. I'm gonna chip that mortar out and tuck point those joints. And then we're going to seal the whole thing with a new coat of tar. We're just chipping out the old mortar joint down here on this first course above the ground block. It's so soft that it's just falling out by hand. And I'm not an expert on this, but what happens... Uh, is the cement leaches out of the mortar mix and it makes it just basically sand. It's extremely soft and it just crumbles. It's just incredibly soft. I'm just doing that by hand. So we're also going to take the hammer and wrap on this back plaster to see if there's any loose spots might chip this joint too and we're gonna tuck point it with some new mortar I use Sacri brand type type S mortar mix and mix it in this uh, little pan makes it pretty easy to mix for the mount that we're gonna do uh, I just mix it by hand with a pair of rubber gloves so let's get to it Probably too much, but we'll find some place to put it. In the sense of leaving a couple crumbies in the bottom of the bag. It's been a good minute since I've done this. Creep up on the right consistency so I don't make it too runny. Getting really close.
Okay, that's pretty well how I like it. Maybe, maybe I could have done without that last spray, but uh, I want it to stay workable long enough so I can tuck point that lower joint and then back plaster the rest of the wall with the remaining. Have a regular trowel, then our tuck point tool, use this to stuff it in the joint. I'm going to use this guy to smear it on the wall. Have this brush. I'm going to wet it down and I'm going to run it on the joint to clean out any of the loose debris in there. Let's get to it. Since this is such a big joint with no mortar in it at all, I just take the regular trowel backwards is what works best for me and force mortar into the joint. I get a decent amount started on the joint. I work it in with the tuck point tool. If you're not careful, you'll shove it all the way inside to the cores. Now this obviously isn't going to give the best results but I don't really care because it's below grade you're never going to see this and we're going to back plaster it all I just want a nice solid joint I'm by no means a mason, so if you're a mason, this probably looks pretty horrible. I'm wasting a lot of mortar, but this is me giving the best I got. And I think I'm going to have to re-wet my mortar before we back plaster. It's getting a little dry. Okay, I had to cut out and just uh, back plaster this lower section where the previous uh, mortar was chipped off or fell off. So just to recap, we tuck pointed this joint on in between the first and second courses, basically the second row block because it was all deteriorated. And then we put a thin layer it's kind of like stucco, but they refer to it as back plastering, thin layer of mortar over the part that was missing its old back plastering. And then also we had a little extra left over and there was kind of a crack here and some small spots. I don't know if this is really going to stick. It doesn't really hurt anything. I just went ahead and put it on there. One important thing to note is if you're back plastering, if you're back plastering, you need to have the consistency a little bit less firm than what I had it when I was tuck pointing. So I had to add a little water and it was just too tight down here in the hole to use the big hand trowel and try to back plaster this with the camera down here. So this is what we ended up with. Thin layer of mortar. We're gonna let that dry. There's our there's a close-up of our tile. 
short pieces of clay that aren't connected just set next to each other so water can drain down inside of them and we uncovered that just to make sure it wasn't collapsed or smashed it all looks good runs from over there to the other side of this old porch foundation and previously we wrapped the whole house with brand new uh, PVC footer tile so it ties into PVC on this side and on that side on the other side of the this foundation wall we really should have took this out when we repaired this front wall we just didn't have time to deal with this section at that point in time with all the extra labor of removing the top but uh, now we got our new sill plate in and I want to think I want to say they call this guy the rim joist but I could be wrong on that basically the plate that caps the end of the floor joists so we need to flash all that in and put our siding back on hey guys it's a couple days after we uh, applied the mortar we tuck pointed the joint and put a little back plastering over the section that lost its uh, old back plaster and tar so pretty sure it's dry now we're going to get really messy you have this old bucket of fibered tar that we kept around for a while and it's really just thick way thicker than it is when you buy it new so we're going to stir this up and we're going to try to apply it with a putty knife like a, it's like taffy. It's a little nastier. So like sp spreading cream cheese on your bagel. Mmm. Yuck. A little something extra in there. failure. You should have some, yourself some of this WD-40 handy. This is awesome at removing tar. I say not too bad for the first wipe off. Do this a couple more times and we'll be good. It's always nice when it gets in your hair. Off camera we installed our one inch thick piece of foam. Cleaned off all the footer tile so it's good for drainage or clear for drainage. And now we're going to start filling her back in.
time. Holes getting filled in. No more death trap. So I had these spare leftover six by sixes. They're way more than what we need, but just like the tar, I had them here and I needed a place to put them or somehow a way to get rid of them. So this is essentially a free hole. I got uh, four of them as you can see here. And I tied them together with some treated two by fours. So the only thing really that uh, I had to buy for this was the screws and the two by fours. I mean, I had them, I had the two by fours here, but they were for another job. The six by sixes were just laying around in my way. So I have crossbars here holding it in dimension on the left and right. And I have crossbars this way in and out holding it square. And we're just going to go ahead and backfill it all with uh, gravel here. And ultimately, that's going to be the support for, well, some of the support for our new deck. All right, let's get to it. It's important to note, every time I get a full scoop of stone or, or gravel in this bobcat, it reminds me how hard it is to wheelbarrow and shovel this stuff. This is just, it's awesome. It really is. Here we go. No more hole to fall in. We got our posts sticking up so we can uh, get a good start for our deck off of those. Got her all filled back in. Maybe do a little more leveling with a rake. But uh, it's getting dark and we're going to call it a night. I just want to show you one of my other favorite things to use this bobcat for. Since we're all done, we have all these tools. It takes me about an hour to drag all the tools out. Now that we're done, just throw them all in the bucket, cart them all back in one trip. Did I tell you how awesome this thing is? Moving gravel and stone? Oh, if I had to do that with a wheelbarrow and a shovel, I'd be here probably for a whole day. No way, no fun. This. Way better. All right. The front of the house is starting to look a little less like a crack house and more like a real home. So we're headed in the right direction. Unfortunately, we were unable to complete the project in this video. We still have another video coming out that's going to illustrate the flashing on the front of the house, sealing of the threshold, and the siding reinstall. Potentially in the future, we'll also shoot a video during the uh, raised wooden platform slash porch 
It's going to be dimensionally 8 foot by 16 foot in size and it's going to replace that old concrete pad. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Leave your questions and comments in the section below and I'll try my best to answer everyone. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. we got a lot more videos coming out, some of which are going to include uh, uh, Project MFR. We're going to use it to do some trenching around the house, but first we need to repair a few issues that it has. Thanks again, everyone.